Hello again, class. We have here one more example of all of this stuff with increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, turning points and inflection points. So here I've given you a graph of this function, sine of x plus cosine of x plus x. And that's between 0 and 4 pi. Just for variety, we've went up 4 pi instead of 2 pi. So I'll have to keep in mind that we're doing that. Uh, and we want to know the coordinates, both x and y, of all the turning points and all the inflection points for this graph. So go ahead, just to make sure you're happy with things, pause the video and look and figure out where you think the turning points and inflection points are in the graph. And then I'll come back and I'll go ahead and go over it carefully. Okay, so Turning points first, let's count how many of them they, we expect and where they are. So there's the first one, that's increasing to decreasing. Second, third, and fourth. So I'm expecting when I'm done with this that there'll be four turning points. Okay. Uh, inflection points are a little trickier to see in this graph, but I can definitely tell it's concave down here, sorry, concave down here and concave up here. So there's definitely an inflection point in here somewhere, maybe about the center of this circle. And then concave down, concave up and then concave down. So there's another one in here somewhere. And then it's concave up again. So there's another one in here somewhere. And then I can't quite tell actually looking at this if it's turned all the way back to concave down or not by the time it's over here. So that is, again, one, two, three, and maybe a fourth over here. We can't quite tell. OK, so let's make sure we get that when we actually do this algebraically. So to start with, we're going to take the derivative. And that's going to help us find the turning points. So this will be cosine of x minus sine of x plus 1. Okay. And I want to know when is cosine of x minus sine of x plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. There's a couple ways to solve this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and put a minus one over here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, I know sine and cosine are related by this sine squared plus cosine squared identity, but I currently don't have a sine squared and a cosine squared. Uh, so I'm going to get one. And the way I'm going to get one is I'm going to square both sides here, okay. uh, which is going to give me a cosine squared of x uh, minus a 2 sine x cosine x uh, plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. Okay. Uh, and conveniently, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. And so this, in fact, just reduces down to minus 2 sine x cosine x equals 0. And so you find that your solutions correspond to the spots where either sine is 0 or cosine is 0. So sine of x is 0. That's at 0 and pi and 2 pi. And cosine of x is 0. Uh, that's at x equals. Uh, and so that's going to be when x is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. OK, uh, so let's check really quickly that these actually all work. Uh, so at pi over 2, uh, for example, cosine is 1, sine is 0. Sorry, sine is 1, cosine is 0 at pi over 2. Uh, so then I will get uh, 
0, minus 1, plus 1, which is 0. Okay, great. Uh, at 3 pi over 2, uh, cosine 0, sine is actually minus 1. And then since sine is minus 1, this is minus minus 1 plus 1. That's actually 2. Uh, so this is not actually really a solution at all. I'll go ahead and explain how that happened in a second, but let me check these as well. Uh, when I plug in 0 here uh, back to this equation to see if it's a solution or not, I get cosine of 0, which is 1, minus sine of 0, which is 0 plus 1. That's also not a solution. Uh, cosine of pi is minus 1, minus sine of pi is 0. So that one is a solution. Uh, and then 2 pi, also not a solution. So I actually only get these two solutions uh, in 0 to 2 pi. Those are the ones that correspond to points on the unit circle. Now, real quick before we go ahead and fix this all, how did I get these bogus solutions? Where did they come from? Uh, the place they came from is that when I was solving this equation, I rewrote this uh, by pushing this minus 1 over here, and then I squared both sides. And when I squared both sides, I actually lost track of whether this 1 was going to be a plus 1 or a minus 1, because plus 1 and minus 1 both squared a 1. And so these fake solutions, uh, they actually correspond to the real solutions of the equation cosine of x minus sine of x equals plus 1 instead of minus 1. Uh, so if you do something like square both sides of an equation, uh, you have to be a little bit careful that you don't introduce bogus extra solutions. Okay, so let's write down all of our critical numbers. And let's remember that we're looking for critical numbers not just between 0 and 2 pi, which is what we just found, but between 0 and 4 pi. All right. So we'll write down these first. So pi, pi over 2. Okay. Uh, but then we get these things going around the unit circle again, because remember, we can go around the unit circle one time, but to get to 4 pi, I have to go around the unit circle twice. Uh, and so I need to add 2 pi to both of these to correspond to going around the unit circle again. It will be 3 pi and then 5 pi over 2. Okay. So if I go ahead and write down my number line here, where here's 0, here's 4 pi, then it will be pi over 2, pi, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi. Okay, and I look at where these things are in the picture. Uh, and so this must be pi over 2, so it's increasing to the left, decreasing to the right. And then at pi, it switches from decreasing to increasing. And at 5 pi over 2, which to keep track of, that's 5 pi over 2 there. It must be decrease, switch from increasing to decreasing. And then here it switches from decreasing to back to increasing. And that means that I have one, two, three, four turning points, which is what I expected from the graph. And let's write down the coordinates of those turning points. So we start with pi over two comma, and then I have to go back to the original equation now to plug in pi over two to get the y coordinate here. And so it's gonna be pi over two goes into this. So that'll give me sine of pi over two, which is one plus cosine of pi over two, which is 0, plus x, which is pi over 2. So it's going to be pi over 2 plus 1, comma, then pi. And at pi, sine is 0, cosine is minus 1, and x is just pi. So this is pi minus 1. Uh, and again, you can look here and see that that seems plausible. That, that would be pi comma pi minus 1. Okay. Uh, then at 5 pi over 2, when we go ahead and look at this, 
what happens. So at 5 pi over 2, I then go ahead and get sine of 5 pi over 2, which is the same thing, remember, as sine of pi over 2, which is 1, plus the cosine of 5 pi over 2, which is the same thing as the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, plus 5 pi over 2. So this is 5 pi over 2 plus 1. And then lastly, uh, this point is 3 pi, comma, and then when you plug this in, you'll get 3 pi minus 1. Okay, so that, that is our stuff with turning points. And remember, we're looking for four turning points. We found four turning points. But we now have to go on and look at inflection points. Okay, and inflection points are going to correspond, again, to places where the second derivative is zero. That is, places where the concavity changes from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. So for this, I'm going to need to go back to what the first derivative was. So the first derivative, and I'm just copying now from back on the first sheet here, the first derivative is cosine of x minus sine of x plus 1. So I can go ahead and find the second derivative. So the second derivative here is going to be minus sine of x minus cosine of x. Okay, and the derivative of the plus 1 is just 0, so I don't have to worry about that at all. Okay. So I now need to solve when minus sine of x minus cosine of x is equal to 0. Okay, which happens um, if you look at it when sine of x is minus cosine of x, okay. uh, which in the unit circle happens at 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. But remember, we're talking here between 0 and 4 pi, so I have to go not just to 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, uh, which, again, playing the graph game, that's got to be the 3 pi over 4 inflection point, somewhere about there. Uh, and the 5 pi over 4 one has to be over here somewhere. I also have to account for these two inflection points. Uh, and where are those inflection points? Well, those are going to be 2 pi after each of these. So if I add 2 pi to 3 pi over 4, let's see, that's adding 8 pi over 4. So this will be 11 pi over 4 and 15 pi over 4. Okay. And note, at the very beginning, we said, hey, I can't quite tell if an inflection point makes it in or not at this very end. It actually does at 15 pi over 4, which is just the teeniest bit less uh, than 4 pi. So it's right, right at the very end there. Okay, and so I can write down the coordinates of all of these points. Okay, so at 3 pi over 4, let's go back to the original function at 3 pi over 4, sine and cosine are plus root 2 over 2 for sine, minus root 2 over 2 for cosine, so those add together to be 0, and so this is just 3 pi over 4 comma 3 pi over 4. Um, at 7 pi over 4, now the sine of 7 pi over 4 is minus root 2 over 2, and the cosine is plus root 2 over 2, so those two again will add together to be 0, and so this will just be 7 pi over 4. Um, and continuing on, actually the same thing happens. So here uh, I end up getting 11 pi over 4, and here I get 15 pi over 4. Alright, 
So that gives you an example of calculating these things when there's trig functions involved. Okay. Uh, next video is going to be a real short sort of comprehension check to make sure you can do this on your own. Uh, it'll be real quick, just I recommend boot it up, do that one on your own sheet of paper, and then you can watch me go through it. And then after that, we're going to talk about these things from a graphical perspective from a couple different angles. Okay. But until next time, be well.